Thanks, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to talk about how the NC State libraries are evolving to meet the emerging needs of a modern research campus. Uh, I'm going to focus on plans for the new James B. Hunt Library that's going to open this winter. Uh, and I'm going to talk about services at both libraries, but I've really only helped with a tiny bit of this planning. Uh, last year, I served on the service and staffing planning group uh, for Hunt Library, but planning has been going on for many years for you know, many people at that library, and they deserve all the credit for this. I'm just kind of bringing it to the masses here. So before we look at the new services at the Hunt Library, I want to talk about how things as they are at Hill, D.H. Hill Library, uh, on the main campus of NC State. It has all the trappings that one might hope of for a modern library, um, and these are services that are found in lots of other libraries, so I'm going to rip through these pretty quick so we can get to the, the juicy bits about Hunt. So there's a recently remodeled uh, learning commons with flexible furniture, computing, uh, a gaming area. There are also other nice spaces for individual and group study throughout the library. There is a digital media lab with video and audio editing facilities. Uh, digital signage, and also both desktop and touchscreen information kiosks. We have a, a very nice uh, website that's based on Drupal, and it's centered around that federated search box up in the top left corner. Uh, and also a next generation catalog, which includes a homegrown virtual shelf browser. This is an image of the latest prototype version that we're working on for that. that that'll be touchscreen enabled. Um, and then talk about the Hunt Library, which is scheduled to open in a couple months, uh, the start of the year. Uh, it's located on Centennial Campus, which is adjacent to NCSU's main campus. It's a, both a research campus and partners, uh, so corporate partners and academic partners. Uh, it's a gorgeous building, both inside and out. It's designed by a world-renowned architecture firm, Snowheda, that's done a number of very interesting projects, including the Library of Alexandra uh, renovation. Uh, and the Hunt Library, it further develops services that are already in place at Hill. So that virtual browse product will be even more important as uh, almost all the collection is moving into the BookBot automated book delivery system. That's going to be four robots zipping up and down tracks uh, for this compact climate controlled warehouse type storage. Uh, and what that does is allow us to move the collection into a a volume of one-ninth the space that, that the equivalent shelving would take. And that frees up uh, space for other purposes. So there'll be over 100 group study rooms and specialty rooms. Uh, learning commons spaces on every floor of the Hunt Library, and also <coughs> private learning commons for both faculty and grad students. Uh, and so these services that I've talked about so far, both at Hunt and Hill, you know, even the most cutting edge ones, like the, the BookBot system, they're neat, they're great, um, more libraries should be doing them, I think, but they primarily serve this centuries-old end that libraries have been doing all along, and that's to serve the, the bibliographic paradigm, right, so to support documents in all their various forms. Um, and it's all part of this, you know, momentous uh, support structure that libraries have built up to support the con consumption of documents. So everything from tablets and to codexes, and then in modern times, books and even electronic documents, but all um, around that same kind of paradigm. What's more interesting to me is the, the new end that's going to be served by the Hunt Library, uh, and that's to provide support structure for a new technographic paradigm, if we can call it that. Uh, this slide I cribbed from Morris York, a uh, presentation that he gives um, about the Hunt Library, and it shows some of the use cases we have on campus. Uh, and you can see, just quickly scanning through this, you can pick out any number of them. That, are, that move well beyond the document paradigm. So something like simulation, uh, mapping, big data, um, scientific and research data. The, we're continuing to support the mission of the research library. You know, that, that's not changing, but, but research and learning is changing in the 21st century. Uh, consumption and creation in this day and age is very different from the days of yore. Um, we're not talking, we're still supporting the document paradigm, but we're adding this other facet to it. And the new means that are going to get us to this new end, the support structure that we need to develop for the technographic paradigm, um, are embodied in some of the high-tech spaces and services at Hunt Library. So there'll, again, be audio and video production studios, uh, but this will include a maker lab with 3D scanning and printing, a laser cutter. Um, so we're trying to put the, the tools for digital and physical creation in our users' hands. There will be uh, a number of 
specialty spaces. And the first one is the creativity zone. Uh, so this I think of as a, a group study room pushed to the logical extreme. It's an extremely flexible room. Uh, almost el every element in that room is configurable. So uh, beyond just being able to change and move the seating, the uh, partition walls, the displays, the projectors or, or LCD screens, and the lighting are all hung from this pipe grid system, um, which means we can move them to just about any configuration within that room. So it's really a blank canvas for groups to do different things with. And so an example of a project that will use that space, uh, there's a Navy ROTC program on NC State campus, and they'll be able to simulate the virtual bridge of a warship in that room. Uh, this is not an actual image, uh, it's just a system, uh, an image from another system I grabbed online, but you can imagine just uh, arranging the furniture into something that recreates the actual bridge and then displaying that up on the wall. And because the Creativity Zone can be partitioned, they can actually do two different ships on either end of the room and a third ship next door in the teaching and visualization lab. So this is sort of the black box to the Creativity Zone's white box. It's, there's lots of high tech in there. The, the most obvious one is 270 degree ultra high resolution projection. Uh, and that space will support interactive learning and research. There's really just technology pervading every surface of the room. So project in there. There's a, a digital humanities project that's uh, underway that will recreate the visual and auditory environment of the courtyard of St. Paul's in the 1600s during a sermon by John Donne. That's a really beautiful project. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. This is the, the game lab, uh, and that supports the scholarly, scholarly study of games at NC State. So NC State has a very prominent computer science program, which includes a digital games research center. This room will have, uh, you can see the ultra wide uh, display along one wall and that supports multiple inputs. So you can do a d variety of, of uh, configurations for that. And in between scheduled uses for research or learning uh, classroom environments, it'll also be available for students to use for entertainment purposes, just like they do in the commons now. Um, so there's already been a game developed for this space. We have a, a prototype um, to test out a lot of this technology at the Hill Library currently. Uh, so last semester, a, a joint class of computer science and design students built a prototype. This game's called NOL, N-O-L, uh, and you can actually go online and, and there's a cool little video um, demonstrating it. Um, but so the computer science students developed a game engine, design students built the art, 3D models and animations, and they actually tied together two connects to allow four players to play simultaneously on this ultra wide wall. So a, a really innovative use of new technology. So besides that game room, other spaces in the library are gonna have micro tile display walls. So these are large format display walls that are made up of small um, component micro tiles. They allow for ultra high 4K plus resolution uh, and a variety of formats and, and inputs. Um, they can also take on different form factors. So beyond four by three or 16 by nine, you can see the schematics um, showing how we're gonna have some interesting kind of split screens throughout the library. And those screens allow us to showcase the products of research on campus. So people who, who do uh, research and, and have a, a visual component to, to display at the end of it can, can share that with the library community, which we think is gonna be a very powerful uh, use case. So here's an example of one. This is Skimmer by researchers at Design Graphics Lab. It's called uh, Agent-Based Visualization of Streaming Text. Apologies that this isn't the greatest picture, but it's uh, pulling data from Google News on a keyword we gave it, NCSU, and it builds a real-time visualization of results for that. And then the last sort of virtual space that I think about is the private cloud at Hunt. So this is gonna include a, a, a high-performance computing cluster and a render farm. Uh, this is an, an image of the data center in the bowels of Hunt and some rough specs for everybody to drool over. Uh, <laughs> users will be able to spin up a virtual machine on demand and submit compute or render jobs to the cloud, uh, access the cloud from anywhere in the Hunt library, and I think in the future from their office on campus as well, and it allows them to access and move um, data and projects around to the different spaces of the library. So it's one of my favorite projects just because it taps into all the spaces and services we've talked about. It's um, called the IC Crime Game. It's developed by the Computer Science and Textile Forensics programs on NC State campus. So it allows them to take the creativity zone and recreate a crime scene. Crime scene. They can use uh, 3D printing to actually print out evidence or, or objects in the room then a Microsoft Connect to scan the room and create a digital model, and then recreate that model inside a game engine hosted in the private cloud, 
which remote users can access and collaborate real time with people who are actually in the creativity zone. So it kind of touches into every single facet of Hunt. It's gonna, it's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, so in conclusion, and I'm running a little long here, but just to wrap up, um, we're witnessing, again, this shift from documents to technology. And the framework that I ascribe to all these new offerings is technology as a service. And this term is already used in the industry, um, and I don't mean it in the sense that vendors mean it. I mean it as library service, so delivering technology as a core library service. So I don't think it's going away, our traditional mission of providing access to information, but what's rising to meet alongside that mission is a new one of providing access to information technology, so sharing resources uh, on campus um, and, and pushing forward new innovation. So uh, I, I, do ha I ran a little long, but I have some time for questions if anyone has it. If not, if we don't get to your questions, feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to talk about this stuff. Thanks. We do have time for a quick question. If there's a, any questions here, okay. One question over here. Uh, the services that you've shown us are, uh, are all located in the library. Um, all of those services could theoretically also be located in uh, faculties or individual in faculties. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, what do you think it's, is, it is that the, makes it the library the, the place for um, uh, ho housing those services? I think that's an excellent question. Um, and it's not just, th these are services that could be hosted within an individual college or unit, but also within the OIT structure. Um, so there's definitely, going to be some shifting grounds in the future as to what properly belongs where. Um, for me, these are, for the, these are all shared resources. So it's, it might not make sense or there might not be funding for any one college to develop any single one of these spaces. But by pooling their resources, they can take advantage of them. Um, you know, they can share them within the library. So we had an earlier version of this at the Hill Library in our technology sandbox, which is a room we basically set aside for prototyping new technologies. And there's a $100,000 plus per perceptive pixel in there, which um, a, a lot of both faculty and students are interested in learning how to program for it and use it in classes, but it doesn't make sense to drop one of those into every college on campus that might be interested in. So instead, the library becomes a shared resource where anybody can tap into it. Thank you. Sure. Who's next? Does it blend? Does it blend? Yeah. <laughs> Slices, dices, julienne's? Yeah. It, 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 it's, a, it's a fantastic um, facility, and my, I guess my question becomes, who supports this? I mean, under whose auspices does, does the whole um, um, set up? You know, it, it seems, um, you know, who, so is this the IT department? Is this the library? Is, you know, what's, what's the support mechanism for mm -hmm. something that is clearly going to be extremely demanding because yeah. I do this yeah. sort of thing? It's definitely a, a blend. So. Our public services are sort of training up and hiring students who have familiarity with these systems and are going to put them to use to do a lot of the front end service. But IT is also reaching down and providing more public service than they had in the past. Um, so that'll be both on sort of the, 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 brunt, the grunt level of moving around the fixtures in those rooms and, and, and configuring things on the back end and, and supporting the, the virtual infrastructure, but also we're spinning up a whole new unit. Uh, that's going to be headed by an academic technology librarian who's going to do the kind of outreach. I mean, you can't just, you can't walk in, you can walk into the teaching and viz lab and, and do lots of stuff, but, but to really tap into the full power, you're going to want to go through a consultation process and really plan out something over the long term. Time for one very last question. What are you using to provision your VMs, like when researchers want a VM, like what's your stack? Like? Yeah, and I, I can't speak authoritatively to it. My boss certainly can, and I can pass along a question to him. I know a year ago in the early planning, uh, we were thinking we were going with the Dell product, which the name, the product, the name escapes me, but it was um, something that Dell was offering to uh, provision virtual machines on demand. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, thanks so much.